Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week on Ice Pilots and WT. A rookie pilot nearly runs off the runway. Are they tight enough? Yeah. Prefkar gets behind the puck. Stand up. And then drops the ball. No! Big time. Go with me. I'm shocked. And Joe goes on a date with a real dog. I'm watching that dog in the window. Take it over. Out of your hats, boy. Yeah. It's the beginning of another cold, hard day on the ramp in Hay River Northwest Territories. Oh. It's cold and windy and miserable. The, last one. the courier truck arrives late, and co-pilot Graham Ferguson All right. and Rampy Jeff Tapper have to scramble to keep the freight moving. I gotta get in there and load because like we don't have time to wait. People in the elevator are waiting for their freight. Watch your head. Yeah. There's a windshield piled to the ceiling. Why? The f does this truck look like this? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. But for Jeff, there's another reason to hustle. I'd like a chance to fly a loaded plane because I've done all my training on empty planes. You get a different center of gravity because of the way it's loaded, so. And we have about 4,100 pounds going on here today. Put that on the right, and this will go on the left. Depending on how you load it, you can make it a little nose heavy, and that's going to change the way the plane reacts to your inputs and the way it reacts in the air, the way it flies. Uh, three pallets left. We're doing the one we're pulling off of now. This morning, Jeff really wants this experience. Might have to buy Graham a beer, but... That's how we look it. We're done. This winter, Jeff has gone from Rampy to a fully licensed pilot on the DC-3. Hey, thanks for letting me fly, man. Yeah. Round two! But he's never flown a loaded DC-3 before. It's a little icy! Jeff will be flying with Captain Ghislaine de Rocher, a veteran DC-3 pilot from northern Quebec. We're going to keep that thing handy. Yeah. On this flight, Jeff is going to get a lesson he won't forget. Uh, you want to do it? You want me to do it? We do it. All right. Then we're ready to take off. Buffalo 705, clearance will be canceled if not airborne before 1441. There you go. Go ahead. We have to hurry up. Let's go. Move. Move. The tower has given Jeff a window of five minutes to get in the air. Little more, let's go, let's go. Little more. Line up and put your tail wheel in. Close your window. Check that. Put it not lined up here. Turn left, little more. Plenty. Not too much. Go ahead. Ready? Let's go. Go, go, Jeff is too slow to get airborne, and the tower faults him for a delayed takeoff. Current time, 1443. You are supposed to be airborne before 1441. Affirmative. You taxi too slow, Jeff. Sorry. We're going to have to give you a taxi check. Loaded. Yeah. <laughs> Everything went bad this morning. The seasoned captain offers some tips about controlling the plane during a landing. If you are landing. And you cannot keep it straight with your brakes. You grab one of those throttles and you yank the son of a bitch up. Yeah. That's something you want to do every day all the time. No. The old man will kill you. But yeah. If you need it, save the plane, never mind the engine. Okay. 
As they approach Yellowknife, the tower radios a change to Jeff's landing pattern. Buffalo 705, I'm landing, advise holding short of runway 10. So, now you have to land short. Landing short means stopping the fully loaded plane before it reaches the intersection with the other runway. But a loaded DC-3 has more momentum and needs more room to stop. So Jeff has to make a steep descent to catch the start of the runway without slamming the plane down too hard and crushing the gear. 85. It's a much bigger airplane than I'm used to flying. It's a tailwheel, which I'm not used to flying. And it was my first time flying with a full load. 80. 75. 70. Forward. He bounces hard then hits the brakes, and the plane starts to veer off the runway. Ghislaine takes the controls. Jesus. You don't ever want the other pilot to take control from you. You want to be in control of the airplane. So you know, it's just bad piloting. And a big black eye for a rookie pilot. And the Buffalo 705 is uh, holding short. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody f***s up a landing here and there. It's just, you know, you don't want to do it so early and so bad. Do you remember when I explained that uh, we should operate the engine smoothly? Yeah. Do you agree I was right? Yep. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm trying never to land my back. Oh. Don't. Yeah. Can you get out, Matt? There's a pretty hard one. There's nice and on the wall. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a shitty landing. <laughs> a little bit. It was pretty miserable. What's that for? What is that for me turning? <laughs> oh, come on. It wasn't a brand new tire. Settle oh, down. But my back really hurts from that second touchdown, you know? Oh. Holy f Not gonna beat myself up over it. Joe might beat me up over it. The last thing any new pilot needs is a reputation for making dumb mistakes. Right now, it probably doesn't look good in Jeff's head, but he's got his think big picture. If he continues to mess up landings, we're not gonna fly him. Exactly what you're trying to do. <laughs> Jeez. Good morning, Buffalo Airways. In the Buffalo office, Rampy uh, and receptionist Prev Carmoni is about to face a milestone uh, of his own. The ETA they gave in the morning, it's uh, 5.30. OK. I'm just studying about the DC-3 flight manual. If you want to fly, you have to know about the whole thing about the plane. He moved here all the way from India to pursue his dream of flying. Hey, Mr. Prev when's your uh, actual test? Yeah, this is morning, so. Are you going to pass the first try? Of course. Of course? Yeah. I hear it's pretty tough. Uh, I can do it. Want to do a bet? See, if you get a first try, I'll give you a half an hour dedicated training with Devin. Yeah, sure. Today, he's scheduled to take the IATRA, a written exam that is the first step to becoming a licensed pilot. You know, most rampies come here don't have the IATRA test, so it's a huge pressure for them to uh, to pass it because that is really what's holding them back from becoming a, a you know a DC three pilot. Uh, yeah, a little nervous, but I'm uh, I think I'm prepared, so I can use it. He'll take the exam at Transport Canada's office in downtown Yellowknife. I need to get my IATRA done so that I can get checked out. I can fly as a co-pilot so. I studied for like three weeks. Every time I write exams, like, I always get nervous, so. BC-3 is not a, the world's easiest aircraft, but it's uh, one of the funnest, so. I prefer you can do Zayatra, and uh, if he sticks around long enough, he'll get a chance in BC-3. We think the chances are that uh, Prefcar got on the first try. It's probably 50-50. He, he's pretty confident. He told me there's no way he could fail. But if he passed, it's because of all of my study notes that he used. Oh, 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 he 
if he used your notes to fail, are you gonna accept uh, responsibility? Are you gonna be like, you should have read a little closer, you know? Like... <laughs> I'm Team Prefkar, I think he's a pretty smart guy. Are you Prefkar, are you kidding? I'm, I'm gonna get Team Prefkar shirt. Are you kidding? It's the moment of truth for Prefkar. Oh, uh, it's not good. You need to get Sony person to get a pass. I had to study more, like, you know, like, there are certain things they ask, but I haven't read about those things on the books, so. Uh, I was totally disappointed when I failed. I was so sad and I was upset. I thought if I failed, what's the company gonna think about me? Yes, I really want to prove them that I'm the best. Well, I had to work again. <laughs> So, how'd you do? Oh, uh, failed. No! Yeah. By 6%. Oh. I don't really take an exam again. It's all because of Staples notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me see it. You should have come to my seminar, buddy, but now... No, I got those things for I'm going to go for lunch. Well, Staples, you going to uh, man up and help Refcar pass it now, or uh, give him some help? Yeah, I'll help him. <laughs> <laughs> Prefkar doesn't have much time. He's in Canada on a temporary visa. If he doesn't pass soon, his pilot dreams could be over. Oh. Office assistant and dog lover Katie O'Neill joins Kathy McBrien on a special mission. It's so hard going to the SPCA. Imagine it just want to take every dog. Never Just take all of them. Fill in one application for all your animals. Last month, Buffalo lost Sophie, Joe's dog for 16 years. His daughter, Kathy, thinks her dad may be ready for another pet. I know he really wants one, and he, and he talks about getting a dog. He has for a while, but um, I think he's waiting for someone to take the initiative and get him one and bring it. My dad did say once, it looks unnatural to see a McBride drive around without, without a dog in the back of the pickup truck. Redneck is that sound. I'm excited. Look at that, look at this one. I like I this not guy. love that face. He's so cute. They look nice. That's a nice puppy too. They're all so nice. Little puppy. Right away, one stands out from the pack. Beautiful dog, perfect dog for him. The only thing, it's already adopted to a family in Ontario. And I guess that adoption process has been taking a couple weeks. Okay, break my heart. <laughs> Finding a new Sophie for Joe could take some time. A two week adoption? Rampy Prefkar Moni has a tough call to make. Breaking the news that he failed his pilot's exam to his family back in India. Oh, hello. I'm a cake dog. Cake What's new there? Oh, nothing new. Just wrote my exam and got failed by six person. Ah, prepare for now. I'm not sure. 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 <laughs> okay. Bye, Ma. Bye, Dad. Talk to you later then. Okay? Bye bye. Good morning, Buffalo Airways. Prefkar goes back to the phones. No problem. Prefkar. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, nothing much, you. But new coach Chris isn't about to let him slack off. When he's not answering the phones, he just should be reading. So, do you now know when you're supposed to check your ELT if it needs to be checked? Five minutes. Okay. If you're doing 160 knots yeah. over the ground, let's say, how many nautical miles are you going a minute? If I'm doing 160 knots, ground speed. 
You know, there was a couple things that I asked him before that he didn't know. Let's make it a little easier, okay? Let's say you're going 60 knots. Okay. How many nautical miles are you going a minute? One and one. Right, yeah. so 160 is probably... 2.5-ish, right? Yeah. Very important. You know, you, you can tell that, you know, he went and looked it up, so that's that's good. All right, I want you to pass this next time. You still got my notes? Okay, sure. All right? Yeah, hold right on, man. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Oh, you beat me. <laughs> Upstairs, rookie co-pilot Jeff Tapper is determined not to repeat his sloppy landing. Today, we're going to be doing flight number four. Okay. okay. So he's reliving it on Buffalo's flight simulator with the help of training captain Neil Tatanich. Okay. A little more to the left, right, just a, just a couple of degrees. Buffalo trainer one. My final approach fix. Inbound? Or NDB inbound. Right. right. Okay, just watch your heading there. Yeah, oh yeah. Drift way way too far. The last weighted landing that I did was pretty bad. I've been over it a million times in my head, just kind of trying to figure out what's gone wrong, and I've got a pretty good idea of what I did and what I need to do differently. So as soon as you start pushing that nose down to fly down... Speed, I'm going to pull the power back. That's right. The next thing I want to do is just is get on the plane and prove to myself and prove to everybody else that, you know, that one was kind of a fluke. Let's shut down. So let's log in our time here. It just takes work. Get in the sim, read your books, figure out the airplane. It ain't that hard. Good to do it in the sim before you get in the real airplane and you find it you don't know something. Everyone else has done it before me, so I don't have any excuses. I <laughs> just got to find a way to do it, that's all. The next day, Mikey heads to the SBCA with Katie to see if there are any dogs his sister might have missed. You don't want a big crazy uh, dog or like a husky type where it just goes nuts. Probably not good with kids. How about that one? I like that name. Not good with kids. Good enough for pilots? Oh, he's actually quite a sweet dog. You want to go see Thor? He's outside. Hi, sweetie. Hey, look at you. Every dog's a perfect dog, but honestly, you got to really, it's got to jump out. He was a rescue, he was eating trash or something. Like you can't just go to a, a car dealership and then, you know, oh man, that Ford Focus is awesome. And it's got to really find you. He was found on a tugboat a outside tugboat. the tuck. <laughs> what do you think? Honestly, I think we should get something a little bit more uh, tame. Mostly for my dad, who's now 70s. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Then outside, a three-year-old mom that's ready to leave her pups. Hi. Yes, take oh, me. She hi. Says, take, me <laughs> take me out of here. Yeah. She's the right size and temperament and stuff. She's really sweet. She's really gentle too. I like that. I'm thinking we might like to take her for a trial. There you go. Come here. Yeah, you can jump. You know, we just we had Sophie for 15 years. Getting a dog for someone else is, is really a personal thing. My father uh, really needs a very low maintenance dog, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but we are one step closer. Sweetheart. Oh, baby. Muffy does her best to win over one McBrien at a time. A well, moment of truth. I sure hope the old man's in a good mood. No kidding. But the real test will be winning over Buffalo Joe. There you go, Muffy. This, what do you think? No shit. Oh my God, what do you got here? I see a dog coming down the aisle here. That's not mine, is it? The train? I haven't even heard her peep yet. No, not a sound. Well, here, take her. Turn her loose. I want to see what she's like. I just want to watch her for a minute here. Well, I won't get another dog. Another dog will adopt me. Probably a year, year and a half went by before Sophie stuck up her head and says, I'm going home with you. So I don't really go looking for a dog, no. Turn loose to anger, see where she runs. See if she chased cats or not. She'll be OK. Just let her run. She'll come back. Well, we'll see how she fits in with the cats, you know? What's going on with the cat? They're looking at each other over here. Muffy's winning streak may have just ended. 
Hey, grab the pucks. Yeah, I got the pucks. Take the boots. Skates, not boots. Sorry, skates. Pref Carmoni has been struggling with passing his pilot's exam. Okay, don't put your uh, skates on the metal. So right. Jeff's come up with a way to take his mind off things. Because I'm in Canada. It's a famous sports in Canada. So I want to learn. And I've been skating since I was like four, so anybody who will come skating with me is a good friend to have. Are they tight enough? Yeah, they're tight enough. You sure? Yeah. Now do up the chin strap. Oh, I'll do it. This is gonna look cute. There you go. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> All right, you're getting there. All right, stand up. All right. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Oh. All right. Oh. Come on, keep going. Don't lean on the stick so much. Lean on your feet. I love the ankles. <laughs> All right, just walk. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right, stand up. Oh. Stand up. Hold this. Let the skates glide. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so just push and glide and push and glide. Push and glide, push and glide. Oh, no. How you doing? Oh. Keep skating. Ready? OK. All right. Yeah! Ah. There you go. If your flying's anything like your skating, we're in trouble. The next week, Prefkar is reassigned back to working the courier route. How's it going? I really want to fly. That's why, like, I left India. I left my parents. I left my engineering career. Everything. Came to Canada to pursue my pilot training. Now I'm working on the coldest part of the world. All this focus on passing the exam has made it tough to concentrate on courier. All my deliveries are done, so... I sacrificed all those things, like, I slept only for, like, three to four hours at night, so I started really, after really hard. I really want to fly. I put all my effort here. If he doesn't pass this time, it could mean going back to India a failure. Monday morning. Prefkar returns to the Transport Canada office in Yellowknife for round two. Oh, I'm just a little nervous about the exam. It's my second attempt, right? So I really want to pass. I don't want to fail this time. You know, he's a really hard worker. He's had some setbacks, but if he pushes through them, that's what you got to do to succeed. The last time when I came and I failed, and they everyone said, like, if you're just, if you're not passing, you had to go back to your country. We're upgrading. Back at Buffalo, new pilot Jeff is in the doghouse after a terrible landing in a DC-3. He's been assigned the worst job a ramp he can get. This is the shitter. I'm gonna put this in the plane so that's not just a bucket anymore. Joe might test it out tonight. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if he actually has to go or if he's just doing it just so that he can watch me take it out and clean it, make sure that I'm doing it. That's it, pour it out in a urinal. Hopefully with some gloves on. Ah, uh, the glamorous life of a flight attendant, right? The VIP 12 liter. This is the new honey bucket, the upgraded model. It's just probably a little bit more comfortable to sit on. This is the other chair, or the honey bucket. There is metal, and it's like minus 40 in the bathroom, so if you ever sat on it, you'd get stuck, I'm sure. So the heat doesn't really get back here. It's kind of drafty. It gets pretty cold in here, so if someone were to actually sit on that, it'd be really cool to frostbite on your bum. For Jeff, the chance to redeem his reputation as a co-pilot can't come soon enough.
Downtown, Prefkar just finished his second attempt at his commercial pilot's exam. Hey, pass! <laughs> Finally. Oh, feels so great. So excellent. I just give me a second, my mom is calling. I have my exam in the chamber. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> Feel so great. Yeah. Riding high, he heads back to the hangar. Uh, 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 uh. How is it? Oh, yeah. You got it? You got it. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. So, weight lifted off your shoulders? Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> it is. Feeling pretty good? Oh, yeah. 74. You're threading the needle there, buddy. Let me see the other sheet. Well, not bad. Good job, man. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks for the help. No problem. Yeah. But before Prevcar can celebrate... Kenny just called and said there's 14 frozen do not freeze boxes in Hay River that were left in the van on the weekend. Got to get to the bottom of that one first before congratulations starts. And the situation gets worse when Joe finds out. What do you know about 14 don't freeze boxes in the van in Hay River? Yeah, Joe, like, uh, actually, I, I put it on the truck, uh, so it is, like, maybe warmed up or something, so that's what I put it on the truck. So you think that 30 blow in a truck from Saturday morning until Monday morning is not going to freeze? It's going to freeze. So why do you leave it in the truck? We have an office with a heated store. Heated store, yeah. yeah. What did do not freeze stickers mean? I mean, like, no, it's not supposed to free, do not freeze things. But why didn't you read the stickers? <sighs> it's a big problem. problem 14 yeah. boxes you froze. Yeah. Right, now. Come with me. 14 boxes of medical supplies. Well, they've been in the trucks since Saturday morning. Well, this is not the first time. Have we froze it before? Yeah. We got a bill for 710 bucks for something we, that we didn't get delivered. We froze. Me? Yeah. It was supposed to go to Hay River to get frozen. So I got the bill. Oh. Pref Carmoni is in big trouble for accidentally freezing a load of medical supplies. Hey, what about those boxes? Uh... The other rampy in Hay River confirms the bad news. Like, how many boxes? What? So all those are, like, not freeze. Now he has to face the music. Buffalo cargo manager Ron Kingsley hauls him into the office. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I don't. You know the process. You know what you're supposed to do. You've done it before. This is going to cost thousands of dollars, just so you know. After the investigation, we come to the conclusion that uh, Prefcar made an error in judgment and uh, we need to deal with it. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to issue final letter of warning okay. and five-day suspension. The five-day suspension kicks in immediately. Okay. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. I know he just passed his iatra, and he's supposed to be happy, but maybe his head wasn't in the game. Or on the ground, that's one thing. Customer's mad. But when you're in the air, there's no room for mistakes. This really doesn't look good for Prefcar right now. Back to here, we're probably. A tough lesson for Prefcar. Oh. But outside, the other co pilots are trying to soften the blow. Don't lose any sleep over it, man. Yeah. For the next five days, see, this day to this day, you're off on vacation. <laughs> Take like three days. I've always wondered how you get days off around here. Yeah, now we know. Come on, dog. Whew. In you go. Come on, get in there. 
You know how to get in a truck? Come on, get in here. This morning, Joe is taking Buffalo's newest arrival out for a test drive. Here you go, yep, that's it. All right, we'll go try you out. See how you make out, eh? Muffy is trying out for the job of hangar dog. It's not uh, so much a choice of myself going out looking for a dog. A dog will come by, and that'll be my new dog. It might take six months, a year, maybe a year and a half, a couple years. You gotta sit up and look around, eh? Watch your bylaw, KC bylaw, come on, bark, because I don't have my seatbelt on. Neither do you. Oh, yeah, well, shaky paw, shaky. You're left handed, too. You're just like me, you're left handed, yeah. How much is that dog in the window? The one with the shaggy tail. So far, so good. But there's still one final test. How well did she handle an airplane? You come in the hangar. Come on. She's about to find out. In you go. This afternoon, Joe wants to take one of his backup DC-3s, known by the call letter CUE, for a spin. Father now has 16 DC-3s that he's let me know that he has. Uh, he got CUE from, uh, you know, the, like he got most of them from the Canadian government. But it's a very nice airplane. It's got a lot of history, very much history in, in the north. The third flight out of the only 1947. That'd be 67 years ago. CUE's uh, had an awesome career. It did 30 years with the Transport Canada. Uh, it was the first ever airplane to land at Yellowknife uh, when they made the airport here. And it even flew around Prime Minister uh, Trudeau back in the day. So we're just going to take it out and I'm going to familiarize this co powder with the different systems of that airplane. All right, that should do. Jeff Tapper hasn't flown the DC-3 since his botched landing. And now Joe wants to fly with him. I want to fly with Joe. It's like you could learn a lot from the guy, but the first time is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> Before I was checked out, it would be okay. Now that I'm checked out, though, there's this expectation, and I don't know anybody who's ever lived up to Joe's expectations. So I can't imagine I'm just gonna come in here and be the first. What well, yeah. airplane? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm there to do. But I don't think that's all Joe wants from me. As long as you get off on the right foot and it's ready to go. You're good to go. As long as I keep the gear pressure up and I remember to put the wheels down before we land. That's it. All right. I was nervous. You don't want to mess up and piss off Joe. And you want to show him that, hey, I'm a good pilot. Uh, you know, Jeff hasn't flown with Joe. And I don't think Jeff has flown CUE. Now, CUE is a lot different than the other DC-3s we have. CUE is basically more of a real DC-3. The other ones are more Air Force. So uh, we have a difference card that I got to give to Jeff, and Joel wants him to know it now. You seen that before? Yes, uh, not this one. Joel wants you to know that. OK. Oh, good. How quickly can you do that? <laughs> not quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Less hand center or head panel. Well, I guess I can go look. Normally, I've got gauges here which read the hydraulic pressure and the gear pressure and they're not there so I gotta find them the radios are different these are a lot different I don't really know how to select com 1 or com 2 uh oh what did I do what started off feeling like a shot at redemption is quickly turning into a recipe for disaster where's the starter Hey, from all I know, it could be my last day at Buffalo. Might be the first time I get fired. New pilot Jeff Tapper wanted a chance to prove himself. What he got was a chance to fly with the toughest boss he's ever had in a plane he's never flown. We got a pooper scooper. Joining them is another Buffalo hopeful, Muffy, on her DC-3 trial flight. Dog, you better not shit there. You're going for a parachute ride with no parachute. You know, dogs are just like babies. They're going to have uh, stuff coming out the front or the back or both at the same time. Well, Jeff, we got our uh, dog shit material here. Oh, yeah. We got some fantastic some paper towel, air freshener. We got some fantastic. Uh, I guess so. We got, we got some, uh, yeah, we got some air freshener right, down here. You ready to go? You ready to go? 
Well, my father doesn't really bond with anything uh, that isn't in the air, so get the dog in the air and see if he not only passes the flying test, but the Joe test, and we'll see if we've got a new mutt. All right, pup, this is us. Come on. Okay, there you go. Now remember the rules? No pooping in the airplane. No puking either. If that's the only thing that he can find, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Jeff is starting to feel the pressure. You got Joe's headset and stuff? Nope. Oh, you better get that or he's gonna lose it on you. Does he not have one in there? Nope. Oh, shit. See all the shit that I don't think about? Imagine if I forgot it. Yeah, he looks like a nervous wreck, man. Joe's watching for anything that Jeff misses. You ready to go? Yeah. You know this? Yeah, I just went through it. I just had the seat. You had seen it before? We had it. We made up another sheet of all the differences between all the airplanes. Well, anything I ask you, you'll know. I certainly hope so. <laughs> I know it, hope. It's like I'm hoping that mountain's not there, and it yeah. is there. Yeah. You know, in airplanes, you don't want to hope. No, I know. You want to be sure. OK, I'll grab my spare headset. OK, I have one in there for you right now. No, but I'll take a set, because you never know what the hell's going to happen in that airplane. I've had the airplane close to 20 years. I fly every year, a little bit. Maintenance wants me just to give the engines a good run, and the best way to run them is to do a circuit with them. He's been flying the same airplane for 40 years. That guy could grease a landing with his eyes closed. Nobody knows that airplane better than him. After four decades, not a single detail goes unnoticed. The first thing you learn about this airplane, when you come around a corner, you always bump your head on here. Yep. Because the other airplanes don't have it. Hey, dog. So you going to go for the airplane ride? Yeah. Just a short ride around the airport, but for a young pilot and a rescue dog, their futures at Buffalo could all come down to this one flight. Oh, yeah, my throttles. Your throttles. Rookie co pilot Jeff Tapper is in the hot seat. Now, hold the nose down, 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 that's it. He's getting put through his paces by the most experienced DC-3 pilot in the world. And Joe expects perfection. I was nervous. It's a lot to think about when you're flying with Joe. OK, climb up to the top of the clock. All goes well until Joe throws him a curveball. We're at the airport. The keeper just spinning right around. Over here. Joe calls the tower and asks to do a low pass over the taxiway in front of the hangar. Yeah, we're going to do some air work out here. Buffalo Trainer 1, tower, wind 010 at 4, clear low approach. Now, in this turn, we go right onto a right base on the 10. I was not expecting to do a flyby whatsoever. Okay, call 100 feet. 
Then Joe just told me to call out altitudes as we were descending. About 140. 140 feet? Yep. 100 feet. Hangar about 50 feet. We were right over the taxiway and flew right in front of the hangar. And then he pulled up pretty good. It was great for me to be in that airplane doing that. So close to the ground, you get that sense of speed, you get the rush. All right, train roll. That pass was what it looks like when you miss on a VOR approach. All right, check that report five in the northeast. Thank you. Okay, that's what it looks like when you miss. Yeah, pretty good miss. You know, my father always has uh, fun when he flies. It's way better to sit in the office. I always hope the dog in there has a fun time because if he, uh, you know, has uh, his wings, he's more likely to stick around. So we'll see when it lands. Maybe there's dog puking. Hopefully there's no human puke, and, and Jeff does pretty well, too. How does my pastures look back there? I don't know. We brought a bag. The captain turns the controls over to his co-pilot. Hey, pup. Hey, what do you think, eh? She's just fine. She doesn't seem to care at all. There we go. Oh, yeah, we'll just do a, a lazy turn to the right back towards town. Sure. All Jeff needs to do now is land the plane on the same runway where he messed up. Oh, okay, so you see a 34 of the button yep. there? Oh, okay, yeah, I'm just going to slow you down here. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. To put your gear down here. Watch the pressure. Down a wheel. Couple of trainer one tower, clear to land runway 34. Clear to land over trainer one. Coming over the threshold now. What I want you to do is just heels on the floor. We got to make yeah. sure we don't touch your brake. Now just get rid of that speed right here. Right there. Get rid of it. Right there. That's good. Right there. See that? Yep. Now what you got to do is bring the tail down with them. That bounce on to it. No, just bring it down. We still have control over it. Now watch. Swings on it. Don't worry about it. It's all seared with throttles. That's it. At Buffalo, the best way to get over the bad memory of a botched landing is to pull off a perfect one. You're just expecting the worst, and when it when it goes well, you're pretty happy. And Muffy? She did great. She was either sleeping or just kind of relaxing the whole way. I think she might have even liked it. She passed the test. We have a dog that likes to fly. Yeah. She took a nap the whole time, just passed right out as soon as we got in the air. We'll throw her up there and throw her head up to her like Sophie used to Okay. It. And we'll uh, give her a shot, eh? Let's go see. All that's left is seeing how she looks in the captain's seat. Up you go. No uh, dog crap or anything anywhere, so the dog passed the test. Plane flies good. Jeff flew and uh, landed, took off, everything, so nobody shit the bed. Uh, yeah, it went pretty well. Really, I just got to buzz around at 1,500 feet, which is pretty cool. That was probably the most fun I've had flying an airplane up here for sure. But I don't think I <clears throat> screwed up too much. Jeff did really good with that. Good exercise for him to see the difference in the airplane, so he did very well. But it was fun. <laughs>